Good afternoon. I'd like to call the Planning Commission, City, County Planning Commission meeting of September the 9th, 2014 to order. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any action before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign, to sign up to speak. For those who wish to speak, please state your name and address clearly when you come to the podium and please speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. If you have, if you are opposing a rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what is called a protest petition. A protest petition can be very helpful to those residents who live in the zoning area. Please consult the planning department staff for any details on a protest petition and they will be happy to help you. You should also keep in constant touch with the planning department as to when your case will go before the elected officials for a final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Could we have the roll call, Madam Clerk? Commissioner Bielen? Present. Commissioner Busby? Present. Commissioner Davis? Present. Commissioner Gibbs? Present. Commissioner Freeman? Present. Chair Harris? Present. Commissioner Hollisonworth? Hollison Present. Commissioner Huff? Here. Commissioner Hyman? Present. Commissioner Miller? Present. Commissioner Paget? Present. Commissioner Whitley? Commissioner Winders. Present. Okay. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, Pat Young with the planning department. Uh, no adjustments to the agenda, but I can certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with law. And there are affidavits to that effect on file with the planning department. Okay, the chair would like to add in a under new business announcements and announcement pending the results of A, 9A. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> you each were mailed a copy of the minutes. What's your pleasure for the minutes? Mr. Chairman, move approval. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Davis that we uh, approve the minutes as sent out by email. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, please raise your right hand. Minutes has passed 13 to zero. All those in opposition? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, we will move down to public hearing, a open the public hearing for plan amendment with the concurrent zoning map change request for uh, the corners at Briar Creek, A120008, and zoning case 120019. Good evening. I'm Carla Rosenberg with the planning department. I'm here to present on corners at Briar Creek, um, A120008. The applicant is Morningstar Law Group. Um, they are proposing to amend approximately 62.5 acres of the future land use map from commercial and low medium density residential to medium density residential and commercial. This change would allow them to uh, develop commercial space and multifamily residential on the site. Here is a map showing the broader area um, in the future land use context of the site. US Highway 70 runs diagonally from the 
bottom right corner to the upper left of the screen, bordering part of the site to the uh, west, southwest. The site is located approximately one mile from Briar Creek inter interstate, interstate 540. There have been several recent changes to the future land use map for these parcels. The site sits along the border of Durham and Wake counties and is divided between both counties. The 1999 Durham-Raleigh Annexation Agreement designated portions within Wake County for future annexation by the City of Durham. In 2014, Senate Bill 871 then transferred 1.07 acres from the City of Raleigh to the City of Durham. In the justification statement, the applicant explains that for the first parcel, the change of use from commercial to medium density residential is due to environmental constraints, including steep grade changes and a perennial stream which would necess necessitate a strip style development if the site were developed under its present designation of commercial. The comprehensive plan specifically states to avoid this type of commercial development. The, application, the applicant justifies the change of parcel two from low medium density residential to medium density residential as being consistent with the increasing residential density along US Highway 70, including a range of multifamily developments either built or approved within one mile radius of the site. The, applica the applicant justifies conversion of parcel three from low medium density residential to commercial as the expansion of a commercial node. And we would add that the assignment of a commercial designation further expands the commercial node, um, and it's the result of the General Assembly's annexation of these two parcels into the city of Durham. Staff has reviewed the request against these four criteria found in the Unified Development Ordinance. For the first criterion, we found that the proposed amendment is consistent with land use policies in the comprehensive plan, including those regarding commercial node spacing and contiguous development. For the first policy, um, it recommends separation of distinct nodes of commercial development in the suburban tier, spacing them by at least one half mile and clustering them at major intersections. For the second, it supports orderly development patterns that take advantage of existing urban services and avoids leapfrogging or non-contiguous scattered development. Um, I'm sorry, and the third, discourages strip development in favor of commercial nodes with internal connections. And so for the second criterion for plan amendments, we found that the proposed land uses are compatible with patterns of increased multifamily residential and commercial development um, occurring along this corridor toward the east at Briar Creek. They also create a transition between the commercial node and lower density residential uses to the north. And for the third criterion, we determined there to be no substantial adverse impact with regard to infrastructure, environmental protection, or future land, uh, future demand for land uses. And finally, staff determined that the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the pr proposed residential land use. And so the request meets all of the criteria for plan amendments, and the staff is recommending approval. If you have any questions, um, we'll take them. And I would like to present Amy Wolf uh, to present on the zoning. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Durham City County Planning Department. For the zoning request, the applicant is Priest Craven and Associates. Um, this site is within the city's jurisdiction, as Ms. Rosenberg mentioned about the recent annexations. Uh, so the present designation is rural residential in the city's jurisdiction to plan development residential at 12 units an acre and commercial general with the development plan. The total site is 122 point twenty two acres and the proposed use is for residential units in the planned development residential portion of the site and for non residential development in the commercial general designation of the site. The site is twelve parcels. It's in the suburban tier. It's mostly in Wake County. You'll notice on this map there the county line in uh, yellow. Um, again, it was recently involved in s some annexations um, in January of this year, effective uh, March 31st, as well as more recently uh, uh, in July. So the northern portion of the site, 61.68 acres, is proposed for planned development residential at 12 units an acre, which would yield a maximum of 603 units and they propose a maximum height of 60 units. This does meet the minimum standards of the PDR or Plan Development Residential District. 
for the commercial general district with a development plan, it meets the site minimum acreage at um, 60.54 acres. The minimum site is 20,000 square feet. It's well over that. Uh, and the request does meet all the minimum standards of the district and it designates 390,000 maximum square feet of non-residential. Here's the existing conditions of the site outlined in red is the, the boundaries of this project. Um, there's a number of constraints on the project or on the site. There's wetlands on this southern uh, four acres to the south of T.W. Alexander. There's some wetlands in that portion of the site. Uh, north of T.W. Alexander, which is uh, about 118 acres, um, there, there are some streams. There is a power line easement running through the site. There's also a sewer easement and a pump station uh, near the confluence of the streams. This, are the, th this represents the proposed conditions of the site. In the blue is the planned development residential portion and the pink outline is the commercial general portion of the site. Um, there's a number of tra tra um, transportation or traffic improvements associated with this uh, amount of intensity uh, proposed. There was a traffic impact analysis that had many recommendations for improvements in the area and I will briefly go over those. They're also detailed in your staff report. Uh, I will reference a number of roads. Um, T.W. Alexander is here. This is, here is the loop road. This is Street A. This is ACC Boulevard extension and Cozart Road is um, on the eastern portion of the southern PDR piece. Andrews Chapel Road extends from the eastern boundary of the site this way. So the commitments of this, this proposal is a maximum of 603 residential units that would be on the PDR portion of the site, a maximum of 309,000 square feet on the commercial general portion of the site. There's two potential stream crossings. I want to note the staff report was an error. It mentioned one. There are, in fact, two identified on the plan. Um, there are eight site access points. The impervious surface maximum is 82.5%. The tree coverage is identified at 15.1%. There are graphic commitments on the site, which is tree preservation areas and those eight site access points. There's a number of committed roadway improvements. I'm not going to read them all. Um, they are detailed in the staff report. Um, they they um, are a result of the traffic impact analysis. And um, if you have any questions, where uh, staff is available to answer that. The, this site was reviewed by, I believe, two different jurisdictions um, of NCDOT. So it had a thorough analysis. Um, there are commi text commitments as well, which include dedication of right of way to uh, accomplish those um, traffic improvements, as well as dedication of a greenway easement uh, along uh, for the Briar Creek Trail along Briar Creek. Again, more dedication of right of way to accomplish those traffic improvements mentioned, uh, as well as um, strengthening pavement on Andrews Chapel Road. There are design commitments associated with the request because this request would allow for multifamily residential as well as non-residential development. Would, those are the two criteria that would uh, require tr design commitments. This request is not consistent with the future land use map of our comprehensive plan. You heard the staff report by Ms. Rosenberg uh, for your consideration. It is consistent with all the other applicable policies of our comprehensive plan. And for that reason, staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And staff is available for your questions. Thank you, Amy. I have one person uh, signed up to speak on this item, a representative for the uh, applicant, Attorney Patrick Baker. You have 10 minutes. Uh, should need a lot less than that, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Chairman Harris, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Patrick Biker, and I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. 
I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. I'm here tonight representing the property owner, Creekwood Highway 70 Alexander LLC. We are requesting your recommendation of approval for this plan amendment and zoning map change for slightly more than 120 acres that is located primarily in Wake County at the intersection of TW Alexander Drive and Glenwood Avenue. With me tonight are our traffic engineer, Earl Llewellyn with Kimley Horn, and also our site engineer, Ben Williams with Priest Craven. Since you all have just heard a thorough staff report on the plan amendment, we don't have a whole lot to add on this topic. In a nutshell, we're requesting this plan amendment because the commercial area along this part of US 70 needs to be consolidated at the TW Alexander intersection. This plan amendment will create an attractive commercial center rather than unattractive strip commercial development. Also, it's important to locate residential buildings on parcels that need to be developed with more sensitivity to environmental constraints such as stream buffers. Accordingly, we respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval for this plan amendment. In regard to our zoning map change, we are calling this approximately 120-acre development the Corners at Briar Creek. The northern half of this development will be a mix of apartments and townhouses, and the southern half, close to Alexander Drive and US 70, will be commercial. The Briar Creek submarket is strong for multifamily, and it's even stronger for retail. The Corners at Briar Creek represents a tremendous opportunity for the city of Durham to get a piece of the action in this hot corner of Wake County. Based on anecdotal evidence, it appears that many East Durham residents are spending a considerable portion of their disposable income in Raleigh at Briar Creek. The retail component of the corners at Briar Creek is Durham's opportunity not only to reduce this sales tax leakage, but also to attract Raleigh residents to spend their money within the, the Durham city limits. So in conclusion, we're very excited to bring to you this evening the corners at Briar Creek. We've been working for two years on this ambitious project and we think it will be a great asset for the city of Durham. We respectfully ask for your recommend, recommendation of approval, and our team will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, Turner. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing and bring the matter back before the commissioners. Are there members of the commissioners who would like to speak? Uh, Commissioner Gibbs and then Commissioner Miller. Um, this first question is for, uh, for staff. Uh, in our notes, it said that there will be a traffic separation between uh, 70 and uh, TW Alexander. Uh, do we know whether which, which one of those is going to go over the other, J just out of curiosity, as much as anything. Uh, Bill Judge with transportation. Um, no, it would be too early to definitively say which road would go over which, based okay. on some of the preliminary functional designs. Uh, it's probably more likely that TW Alexander would go over 70, but until the actual interchange gets into hard design, design work that, that would still be yet to be I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Judge. I, uh, <clears throat> in the notes that I read uh, in, of the other, uh, other uh, people that have reviewed this, uh, there are several uh, stream buffers and I, it seems that the concern has been met by, by what, what you have proffered and what you are planning to do. Uh, <clears throat> I am wondering, there was one concern, and I know this has nothing to do with this right now, but ACC Boulevard, uh, it dead ends on the edge of your property and picks up again on TW Alexander. Is that going to connect sometime in the future? And I know it's gonna be done by somebody else, but it will cross one of the stream buffers. I was just curious about that also. That, that's a very good question, Commissioner Gibbs. Uh, that uh, extension of ACC Boulevard is on privately owned property, and I believe it's within the jurisdiction of the city of Raleigh. But having said that, I think when that property redevelops, um, it'll be, um, it will be extended by that by that development, yes, sir. 
Well, other than that, I, I, I think this is going to be, a, it sounds like it's going to be a nice development. Um, and that concludes my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have some questions for staff. Um, I want to understand a little bit better uh, what the uh, level of service on uh, these roads is going to be after this project is built out. Can somebody come to the mic and tell me about that? The uh, applicant did perform a traffic impact analysis that analyzed the uh, intersections one year after build out of the site. It was reviewed by the City of Durham, NCDOT, and um, City of Raleigh as well because the number of the intersections impact them. And uh, they are providing all the acceptable levels of service at, at the various intersections. Um, well, they, what they are vary those, depending what, on location. Can you tell me what the level of service would be on uh, TW Alexander and also on 70? The, uh, the intersection of US 70 and TW Alexander would be a level service D in both the AM and the PM peak hour at build out with the improvements, with the developers' improvements. With the developers' improvements. Yes. Um, and then I have another question, if I may, Mr. Chairman, for the uh, applicant. The version of the um, development plan that we get is difficult for me to read uh, because it is small. Uh, so I was hoping you could confirm for me, do you have any commitment concerning the mix of apartments and townhouses that you propose to build? Our educated guest, Commissioner Miller, is, is perhaps one quarter townhouses and three quarters apartments, but this is a large project and it'll be a long um, process. Uh, we plan to start with the commercial section uh, and then get to the residential, which obviously makes sense. You'd work north from the intersection. So it'll really be dictated by market conditions when we get there. So it'd be um, uh, really conjecture. But that's, the, that's what appealed to us about the PDR designation, is that allows flexibility to respond to market demands. And they're both successful townhouse communities and successful apartment communities in the Briar Creek development. So is it possible under the current commitments that it could be all apartments or all townhouses? It could be either one. That's correct. And you have a 60-foot height limit. Do you have any? Mm -hmm. in, do you envision on what these buildings might look like? Uh, it, they would be. Uh, to be brutally honest, the answer is no. But uh, they would be. Uh, we're trying to mix in with the uh, the, su the successful multifamily that's already there, and 60-foot height limit is is very acceptable to us. We certainly have no intention of asking for. Uh, uh, coming back to ask for uh, exceeding that. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank and you. I have one final question for, for staff. Is there any way that anybody that you could show the future land use map for this area? Actually, a, lar a larger area than that. Uh, so essentially, one of my principal concerns is that as I read the comprehensive plan and look at the future land use map for uh, Highway 70, we talk about commercial nodes and uh, trying to avoid uh, continuous strip development along Highway 70. But I'm concerned that if we make every intersection along Highway 70 in Durham County in this area a commercial node, that we're going to wind up with a strip of commercial nodes along Highway 70 uh, that will make the road unattractive and a mess. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is have somebody convince me that creating uh, a commercial node here at TW Alexander with 50 acres of general commercial development 
is a good thing and promotes this notion that we will then have some spacing and distance between uh, commercial developments along Highway 70 in Durham County. Uh, just beyond this in Wake, we have a gigantic commercial node. I don't even call it a node. That's, it's a town called Briar Creek, and I'm concerned that if we don't manage growth well as we come, as you go west along 70 from this point into the city, that we're just going to have a mess. And I want to be assured that this isn't step one in creating the mess. Whoever can answer that. Uh, Mr. M or Commissioner Miller, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Certainly a very valid concern. I think one of the top concerns when the 2005 comp plan was adopted was to not encourage strip development, as you've described. Um, there is a policy, as a, you're probably aware, that prohibits us from recommending any new commercial node that's within a half mile of another commercial node. And so this does meet this test for Durham. You're, you're certainly correct that this is a western extent of a, of a lar very large commercial node at Briar Creek in Wake County. So um, I think the bottom line is we've evaluated this, uh, that there are not any uh, commercial nodes in Durham County. There are, are some non-conforming or pre-existing commercial uses, but not commercial nodes um, to, the, to the west on 70. And we would not, we would not recommend any commercial no new commercial nodes within a half mile of the site if this is approved. Thank you. Commissioner Wines. I, I, it's, it, it seems to me that this is a, a, a well-designed plan and, and um, uh, it's an, the zoning is an improvement over what, what we've got now. Um, I think my questions are, would relate to um, the, what the city needs to do to, uh, uh, or if the city is, p policies are uh, uh, going to make good, good development in this area. Uh, and I was wondering, I'm thinking about uh, uh, transit. It's, it's not served by, by transit. It says there's no transit in a, in a quarter, uh, within a quarter of a mile or half a mile or something of the site. Um, and, uh, we, if we have all this commercial development and, and um, dense housing, I'm wondering if we're going to have labor force problems if there's no transit. Well, uh, Commissioner Winders, I'm sorry if I didn't catch that in the staff report. No, their data Route 15 serves this site. There is a bus stop on Alexander Drive at our frontage. And for those of you who remember, I was back when Durham had a bus authority, I, I actually served as the chairman. In, it was my idea to uh, um, have bus service that connected <laughs> Durham to Briar Creek. So no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> um, and so no, it, it was. I, it, there is a there is a data I'm bus wrong. there right now. So <laughs> if that if the staff report didn't mention that, I apologize for not catching it. But there is data bus service there. Uh, it serves the Wake Med facility that's on Alexander Drive today. Okay. I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Whitley. I have a question, uh, Mr. Biker. Yes, sir. Can we get a committal of, of bus shelters? Um, I will, s um, fortunately my client's not here. Um, Pat, I don't want to step on your toes um, about a commitment. Have, we've, we've certainly worked that out in the past, uh, a bus shelter at this location, payment for that. So what we, Mr. Chair, if I might, what we were just discussing was I, um, I, I can't directly dispute what Mr. Biker has represented about the stop on the site, but the best information we have is that the current, the closest current site is at the Walmart site, which is over a quarter mile. You know, there's a bus, there's a sign right on our client's property saying data bus route 15. So if that's changed and they left the sign there, I, I, okay. I didn't have any control over that. Sure. And that's why I'm saying I, I just, uh, that's the best information we, we have we, here. Yeah. Can we commit to look into it, Commissioner Whitley? And if it's something that's feasible and makes sense, then we'll work with it before it gets to the city council. That worked for me. Okay. Um, just keep that in the record and I'll follow up with, with you all later. Very good. 
I, I appreciate the concern. Right. I can't tell you how big a boost this would be for East Durham. You know, um, our neighborhoods are closest to the airport, and um, we have five different um, routes that go out of East Durham into Bar Creek area. So, um, and um, the idea of money coming from East Durham to be spent in Wake County has always been a problem for me. But um, here we got a chance to vote on a project um, that's going to be beautiful and smart and, um, and going to supply a need to um, members of East Durham. Um, when the time comes, I would like to make a motion on this, on this, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hold it just a second, Commissioner uh, Freeman. Um, Mr. Biker, I just wanted to ask if there was any um, committal or property or areas of the land being reserved for schools or anything of the sort with that. Uh, the, there, there are Wake County schools in close proximity, so that was not necessary with this project. So they would be in Wake County? The, of the 122 acres, I believe 115 are in Wake County. Okay, if there are no other comments, and before you make your motion, when you speak, please speak into the mic. Commissioner uh, Hymans. Yes, I, I think this is a great project, and it looks wonderful on paper. I have just one question, primarily because, you know, projects tend not to develop the way that, you know, they fully intended. There are lots of changes that are recommended to the roads. Is there any possibility or any indication that some of all of the changes that have been planned will not happen? We have no indication of that, Commissioner Hyman. This is a strong submarket. If 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 commercial can't work in the Briar Creek submarket, then something's really gone off a cliff. And, and we've got we've got good interest from um, really top quality. Uh, commercial tenants for this location so you know there are no guarantees in life that's for sure um, but uh, this this looks like a good a good bet thank I you. appreciate the concern thank you okay before we go back to the second round are there any other commissioners who haven't spoke that would like to speak on this okay Commissioner Miller I just like to follow up on Commissioner Hyman's question how are the road improvement commitments tied to the development or completion of the project or are they tied at all so Commissioner Miller and other commissioners Pat Young again with the Planning Department as is typically the case um, all the transportation improvements are committed as presented to you so they're required to be provided the one caveat or nuance is that they can be Timed, they can be phased um, if the development develops at a slower pace than is anticipated. If there's cause and there's justification provided by a transportation engineer, and the tra our transportation department approves the phasing, so they can be phased over time to be concurrent with the need for the improvement. So there's there's not any commitment at this time that they all be provided prior to first CO or anything like that. Um, but that that is our standard requirement unless there is a phasing analysis completed. A bill wants to add. Yeah, uh, Bill Judge, transportation, that's correct. I believe the right-of-way dedications are also, typically they are tied, required prior to any building permit, but they, they've been phased in the tax commitments to basically be tying to the building permits for the various uh, zoning districts or phases where they'd be doing work. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. The Chair recognized Commissioner Miller, I mean Commissioner Whitley, Mike on. I would like to move that um, case Z12. A. Was the plan commitment first? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I would like to, to move that Z12. A. A12. A. 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 That's what I thought I was doing. Okay. 
Okay, A, A1, I would like to move that A1 to 0008 um, be approved. And I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Whitley, second by Commissioner Pageant that <coughs> case A1200008 be approved. All those in favor, let it be known by show your right hand. All those opposed, show the right hand. Case A2000008 has passed 11 to 2. And now the chair will entertain a motion for the zoning case. Commissioner Patch. I'll make, I'll make the motion that we approve the zoning case Z1200019. Second. Motion by Commissioner Padgett, second by Commissioner Miller, that we approve zoning case Z1200019. All those in favor, let it be known by a show of right hands. All those in opposition, same. Case Z1200019 has passed 13 to zero. Uh, right, Mr. Chair. Yes, Could I just make one comment about what we just finished up? It, it's not a really important thing, but I, it's something that I I said that if I had another opportunity, I'd like to uh, differentiate between East Durham and Eastern Durham. Uh, East Durham is a a relatively smaller area than Eastern Durham. And it, it seems to be that East Durham is applied to everything from uh, Holloway Street to down the, to Oak Grove. Uh, and the only reason I mention it is because that they are two, East Durham is in Eastern Durham and there is a lot more people involved uh, in Eastern Durham and East Durham is the one that is the historic district. And uh, just to keep it, keep its identity as such. And that's, that's all I wanted to comment on. Okay, thank, thank you. you for that point of pers personal privilege. Okay, now the chair will open public hearing on zoning map change requests, Madra, Residential Z1400007. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This is the zoning case number Z1400007 for Madry Residential. Uh, the applicant is Thomas Earl Madry Sr. This is within the city's jurisdiction and the request is from the present designation of Residential Suburban 20, Office Institutional and commercial neighborhood to office institutional with a development plan. The site is 25.35 acres and the request is for proposed use of 175 multifamily residential units. The request is four parcels in the northeast quadrant of Barbie Road and NC 54 Highway. The rear of the site or opposite the frontage of 54 Highway is residential suburban 20 with office institutional and commercial neighborhood along the NC54 frontage. The site is within the suburban tier. It is encumbered by the FJB watershed protection overlay as well as the major transportation corridor overlay. The request does meet the standards of the office institutional with a development plan district. The minimum area is 20,000 square feet. This site is 25.35 acres, which is over a million square feet. The 
OI district allows up to 11 dwelling units an acre. Uh, the applicant is requesting 7.35 dwelling units an acre, which would yield a maximum of 175 units. And the district allows for a maximum height of 50 feet. Again, the site is 25.35 acres. It was most recently used for horticulture and agriculture uses, as well as a retail store to sell those products. There are a couple farm ponds on, on the site, as well as a small portion of a stream along the eastern boundary. And there are some existing uh, buildings on the site uh, which are proposed to be removed. The proposed conditions show the committed access points. There's three of them. Tree preservation areas, there's also three of those along the rear portion as well as two portions along the eastern boundary of the site, uh, as well as the stream buffer. There's also a number of commitments at a maximum of 175 residential units. The three site access points, a maximum of 70% impervious surface, which is also dictated by the watershed protection overlay, and 13.4% tree preservation. The graphic commitments are the tree preservation areas and those access points. There's also some text commitments, which includes commitment of housing type for apartments and townhouses, dedication of right of way along the frontages of the site, as well as uh, roadway improvements for site access uh, and asphalt along Barbie Road and for turn lanes as well in those, with those improvements. Because the uh, uh, site would like to have the option to do multifamily or it's a committing to multifamily which is apartments or townhouses uh, design commitments are required and they have been provided uh, more details in your staff report they are summarized here this request for office institutional is consistent with our office land use category on our comprehensive plan excuse me on our future land use plan of the comprehensive plan so this request is consistent with that as well as the other applicable policies of our comprehensive plan. And staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. Staff is available for your questions. Thank you. I have one person signed up to speak, Gerard Eaton. He's speaking in favor of it. You have 10 minutes, sir. Good evening. Uh, Jared Edens with Edens Land Corp. I appreciate your time tonight. I appreciate Amy's summary of our project. I'm just going to reiterate a few points and provide a little bit of additional information. Uh, as Amy mentioned, the uh, zoning is consistent with the future land use plan. Um, I know that traffic is, is, is an issue on 54. I understand that. But this proposed zoning actually reduces traffic from what the current designation would allow. Uh, transportation zone calculations say that over uh, 600 fewer trips uh, would result from this zoning designation than what's currently allowed. Uh, we are widening Highway 54 and Barbie Road, uh, providing left turn lanes um, and right turn lanes uh, on 54 and Barbie Road. Uh, we are also offering to provide a four foot bike lane along the frontage of the property on both Barbie and 54. Um, I believe this residential use makes sense for the area. You've got significant shopping at South Point nearby. Um, we did have a neighborhood meeting on uh, July the 9th with three people in attendance. Uh, we have no opposition that I'm aware of, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for butchering your first name. but <laughs> it ha it, it, I've been called so much worse <laughs> by some of the people up here, probably. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this issue? If not, I will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. We have commissioners wishing to speak. Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Miller, Commissioner Busby, okay. Commissioner Davis. Uh, this question is for staff uh, with the road improvements to this site, is there any uh, direct correlation with, I think, the existing new development that uh, 
the Meadows at South Point, are we confirmed that that is the access point there? And if not, has there been any consideration to, because I know they proffered some road improvements as well as with their projects. I don't want to belabor the point, but I want to make sure that all these concerns get addressed. Yes, um, the intention is that that access point will have to line up with the one uh, for the Meadows at South Point across the street. Um, I believe the applicant's aware of that project and hopefully is coordinating with that. And my last question is, I understand the road improvements are based on a phased development. However, with as much development that is potentially here, is there any way we could get the road improvements not as a phased development and just have the improvements already there? Um, I was looking, it said it here, uh, as a phased plan. So I guess as many, as you do construction, then there would be the need for the improvements, or would the improvements be based on the fact that there could be 175 units here? I'll chime in if you don't mind, but the, the way the text commitment reads, it says prior to the issuance of a single CO. So uh, the, first, the first one? All of the, the, prior to the first CO, all of the improvements had to be in. Okay. So we, Thank we you. won't be able to phase it. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? That's a question for the applicant. Does your development plan commit you to building residential only? Yes, it's um, 175 units max, and it's either apartments and or townhomes, but that is a commitment. Thank you. And Commissioner Bus. I just had a question for staff. It's, it's encouraging on a big traffic area to see it's going to be a decrease in traffic. Any long-term concerns in the water supply issue? I know that the, the water use for this area will go up, but we still have, looks like we're in good shape long-term. Just curious for staff's point of view. Based on our general, and Amy Wolf at the Planning Department, based on our general analysis with the information that we have, there's capacity uh, presently as well as in the future for, for water capacity. Um, we do keep track of that in, in a general sense and provide that to you so we don't anticipate with this development that that'll be an impact or Thank you. a significant impact. Uh, I see no other comments from the commissioners. Could I have a motion for approval? Commissioner Whitley. <laughs> I move that we approve Z1400007 Second. Motion by Commissioner Whitley, second by Miller that we approve zoning case Z1400007. All those in favor, let it be known by the raise of the right hand. All those in opposition. Case number Z1400007 has passed 13 to zero. The chair will now open the public hearing for Bride Creek Assemblage, Inish, uh, Z140009A. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This next case is an initial zoning for Briar Creek Assemblage Initial, case Z140009A. The, the, the applicant is the city of Durham. Again, this is associated with uh, an annexation case. The request, uh, the geography of the site straddles the Durham-Wake County line. Uh, in Durham County presently, in Durham County's ju jurisdiction, uh, the site is residential rural and in the city of Raleigh is residential four and CUD TD, which is a thoroughfare district for the city of Raleigh to the city of Durham's jurisdiction, all rural residential. The site is 114.17 acres, and again, this is an initial zoning um, anticipating newly annexed land, which is a, a council's decision, or be, will be considered by council. The site is uh, for a non-contiguous zoning. There are four parcels associated with this site. 
it again straddles the Durham Wake County line and is south of Andrews Chapel Road and also south of Leesville Road south and west of Leesville Road and staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city policy for initial zonings uh, we'll also like to note that there is a pending application for this same site that is still under uh, review that is a request for a PDR district of approximately 500 residential units uh, when that is reviewed and it will come before this Planning Commission I came hey one person signed up to speak in favor of and uh, Jared Eaton mm -hmm. Okay, so the applicant representatives available for questions, if any. Are there any other people in the public that would like to speak on this issue? If not, then we'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Are there commissioners that would like to speak on this particular issue? Okay. If not, then the chair will entertain a motion for approval. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the approval of the Briar Creek Assemblage Initial Rezoning, CKZ 14-09A. Uh, second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Bugsby, that we approve zoning case 140009A. All those in favor, let it be known by show the right hand. All those in opposition? Case zero, Z140009A has passed 13 to 0. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, item A on the agenda Unified Development Ordinance IL Project Boundary Buffer TC140002. Uh, good evening, Michael Stock with the Planning Department. Uh, text amendment application TC 14 is a privately initiated text amendment from the Morningstar Law Group uh, to reduce the required project boundary buffer for properties that are zoned IL um, that are also uh, less than four acres in size and also only when adjacent to um, high, uh, heavy industrial or I zoning districts. Uh, the amendment would reduce the potential 100% buffer opacity uh, to a 40% opacity with a corresponding reduction in the buffer width requirement. Uh, the specifics are within your agenda packet. Um, as part of this request, uh, the planning staff suggests a minor reorganization of, of UDO paragraph 943. For clarity, this change would create a new paragraph 943C. Uh, in this paragraph, staff has relocated uh, the current buffer modification standards found uh, within paragraph B and has added the proposed standard discussed uh, above. No other changes are proposed. So in your draft ordinance, you'll see a whole bunch of strikethroughs. All of that strikethrough language has been reorganized into paragraph C, and I highlighted in bold the new language. So just for ease, for ease of review and for clarification purposes. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, representative from Morningstar Law Group here uh, is here for any questions also. Okay, and my assumption is, uh, Patrick, you're here to answer questions, or would you like to make a statement? If, I could, if you'd indulge me with a couple minutes of your time, I'd appreciate it. That'd be wonderful. Thanks. Good evening, Chairman Harris, members of the Planning Commission. Again, it's Patrick Biker, and I still live at 2614 Stewart Drive. Um, I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group, and I'm here tonight representing Wendy's International. We are requesting your recommendation of approval for this text amendment to reduce the required buffer between parcels zoned IL and parcels of less than four acres that, that are zoned industrial. I thought the staff report for this text amendment did a fine job of outlining the, the important issues, so we don't really have a whole lot to add on this item. Long story short, Wendy's wants to replace its store on Hillsborough Road that is over 35 years old and has a tax value of $155,000 replace that with a new store. They'll add new jobs and have a tax value that is significantly higher than the status quo. When we first looked at redeveloping this parcel on Hillsborough Road, we saw that it was 200 feet deep 
and that there is an industrial zone parcel behind Wendy's with a 12,500 square foot warehouse on it. Under the current regulations, there's a 25 foot street setback, and then because the property behind Wendy's is zoned industrial, there's an 80 foot buffer imposed in order to, in order to redevelop the Wendy's site. So out of the 200 feet that we have to work with, we lose 105 feet, more than half of the property, to buffers and setback. To me, that just does not make sense. In contrast, I think it does make sense to request a minor text amendment that will spur redevelopment opportunities like the one we've just discussed for Wendy's. We respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this item? If not, then we'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. I have uh, Commissioner Huff, Commissioner Miller, Commissioner Freeman, Commissioner Busby. Okay, so we'll start with Huff and Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I got you. Um, what happens if the property that is behind it that's now zoned industrial? Um, what happens if it's rezoned? This uh, industrial light property now has, you know, doesn't have the buffers that it might have if that uh, other property were zoned, say, I don't know, uh, lower zoning of some kind. Commercial. It would still have to meet the buffer requirements for whatever that zoning would be. If it were commercial to industrial light, it would still have to meet the, it would be no change from the status quo in terms of the buffering regulations. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but you've already built something that has a lighter buffer than you would if you were next to a residential area, correct? I mean, if Wendy's is, if you redevelopment, develop this place, and you put in a um, minimal buffer because you have an industrial uh, piece of property next to it, if that zoning next to it changes, you're not going to have a buffer to suit, perhaps, the zoning of the uh, changed property, right? Do you follow me? I follow you, but if it were down zone, the down zoned, then the buffer would go down according to the buffer table that's in the UDO today, and so it would still have it would still meet the buffer requirement that's that would be imposed for whatever the rezoning would be. No, I understand that the and, and, and just to be clear, no residential was allowed in either IL or industrial. I do understand So that that. there's no issue I, of there being a residential use on either of these parcels or in any IL or I zone pro properties. Right, but if it's rezoned, if it's rezoned residential, if it were rezoned to some other uh, zoning, then you'd have, then you'd have a piece of property that, that, um, I mean, I think there's a reason why people put the buffers in for uh, light industrial is that they wanted to keep. Right. And it'll still be there. There'll still be mm -hmm. 0.4 buffer on the industrial light zone parcel, which is if it were industrial light next to residential, I think it'd be a 0.4 buffer as well. Wouldn't it be, be, Mr. Stock? Oh, I'm not okay. sure, but okay. I believe it would be. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So that wouldn't change. Mr. Stock, you want some? You want to add something to that? Oh no, I was. I, if there's a question, I'll be happy to answer it. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Miller. So while you're standing there, um, I looked at the table of permitted uses for these two zones, and I was trying to construct in my mind why this buffer was created in the first place between these two zones. Is there, and could not come up with a good answer, but is there uh, an ostensible reason why the, a buffer of this magnitude uh, was thought appropriate between, to divide these two zones? I was not party to the um, creation of these buffer standards at that time, um, and so I could not come up with any reasonable uh, conclusion as to why there is a, either a buffer between the two zones or why there's such a high buffer requirement between a light industrial zoning district and a heavy industrial zoning district. And the one that's proposed um, appears to be reasonable to the planning staff and is very consistent with all the other buffer requirements that is required for IL zoning against other similarly intense uh, zoning districts. And so my next question, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, is also for the staff. Have you looked at the zoning atlas to determine uh, and get a kind of a general picture of, of what the impact of this text amendment might have on other parcels where we have a 
a conjunction of industrial and light industrial and is there anything out there that we need to anticipate might be a problem before we vote? Yeah, I, I, I had um, our GIS staff kind of take a look at where, where are their locations where IL zoning districts are abutting uh, heavy industrial I zoning districts and it's, it's all 99.9% uh, .9 is all existing uh, heavy industrial against other industrial or light industrial segments. There's one area on Ellis Road that has um, uh, residential in um, a heavy industrial district and next to it is, is residential. It's, it's old established um, residential along, which is also already mixed. It's right across the street from a concrete plant too, um, which is also already zoned uh, heavy industrial. So other than uh, uh, that uh, notice there I we didn't see any negative impact with the uh, proposal so in that one instance where we actually have incongruous uses in these zones um, are you concerned at all that the, this change might put the residential development in either of the two districts at any kind of risk or or, or leave it inappropriately protected no, I didn't see any concern whatsoever that where it's residential. It's, they're currently uh, not residential uses are currently non-conforming uses. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, um, the uh, have the uh, the maps here. But the a heavy industrial, the light industrial zone parcel that is residential is less than a, is around a quarter acre site um, next to a, around a half acre or an acre site of residential property that is industrial zone which is across the street from the concrete plant so that's about that's the extent of the I don't well let me let me add to that I'm sorry Mike there, there's a provision in the ordinance Mike maybe you can help cite it for us that says that if there's a residential use even if it's an industrial zone the residential buff the buffer has to be the full buffer as if as if it was a residential use rather than an industrial use has to be provided that's correct there and that's unchanged offered. that's unchanged right. that's unchanged and that's, that's actually right. in the text uh, before you Th That's thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Freeman. <coughs> Sorry, my time I just is have up. a question regarding, I'm sure there's some logic behind it. I just want to understand it in that you're using a text amend amendment versus a variance. Yeah, this would be a poor variance case. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but as a lawyer, I advise my clients to follow the law. Um, and state law requires that for a variance you have to prove that the reason for the variance was not caused by the action of the applicant. And so if Wendy's were to tear down the store, that would trigger the 80-foot buffer. And so in order to ask, you, you wouldn't be entitled to a variance under state law. Um, and so looking at what the options uh, were, this uh, appeared to be the, the right uh, course of action. And it, I sincerely believe it does create better opportunities for redevelopment in Durham than than what we have now with the 80-foot um, buffer requirement. Commissioner Buxby. Great. This is a question for staff. Commissioner Miller actually asked most of my questions. The, the one question I had left was any concerns on the stormwater runoff issues with the reduction of wetland or the, the buffers? They would have to meet all mm -hmm. current stormwater regulations. Um, this amendment does not affect any of that. Great, Great. thank Great. you. Commissioner Gibbs. Well, this is something that I've wondered about for a long time. Even when residential backs up to residential, why there is almost a doubling of the uh, the buffer. Uh, I think this makes sense. Uh, and I and again, uh, Commissioner Miller's questions and staff, your answers uh, pretty much took care of my questions. So that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Whitley. My, my, my question is a simple one. I've noticed along um, that stretch of the lack of shelters, um, bus shelters. And I think right beside, hmm. right beside um, Wendy's is, is a bus stop. Mm -hmm. um, could you help us get a shelter there? I'll be happy to ask them, sir. Be happy to ask. 
we're, we're going to be putting in there's a missing link of sidewalk so when the store is redeveloped that'll put in a missing link of sidewalk on Hillsborough Road that is sorely needed as well and I know we'll be doing that but I'll, I'll certainly ask the question happy to any other Commissioner uh, Freeman while we're at it if we could ask speak, for it speak up it, while the we're reason at I'm it. asking you to speak up this is being televised and uh, they need to hear you uh, you know I was just going to ask if there was any commitments for bike lanes as well. No, no, this is a text amendment. This is not, um, and they're not improvements proposed to Hillsborough Road. It, this is just asking out if Wendy's in the goodness in their heart wants to put out a bus shelter for their patrons. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question. <laughs> Commissioner but it's a Miller. text amendment. It's not a, it's not a rezoning. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I normally do not like changing the text of the zoning ordinance to accommodate a particular piece of property but in this case I'd like to make a motion to approve this text amendment second if motion it's so is it appropriate at yes. this time yes. all right so I move that we change the IL project boundary buffer as proposed by these applicants in case TCE uh, 1402 I'll second it's been motioned by Commissioner Miller Second by Commissioner Pageant that we approve TC 1400002. All those in favor, let it be known, Ms. Show me the right hand. All those opposed? Case TC 1400002 has passed 13 to 0. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. <laughs> okay. All right, so that concludes the business through eight. So we at new business now, 9A, and I think Pat is going to take over now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, members of the commission, this is the, uh, as designated by the interlocal agreement between the city and county and by your bylaws, um, this is the time for our annual elections. Um, what I'm going to do is call, in a moment, call for nominations for chair. Once the chair is elected, the chair will, will call for nominations for vice chair. Um, I sent out an email on this a while back, but I, I'll remind you all that all 13 seated members are eligible to run for either uh, seat. However, um, whichever body the chair is from, the vice chair has to be from the other body. So if, if a city member is elected, the vice chair would have to be from the county and vice versa. Uh, so I'll be happy to, at this time, unless you have any questions, which I'm happy to answer. Uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, I have no question, but I do have a motion. Oh, very good. Well, so I'll, I'll take nominations, um, and then once nominations are closed, I'll, I'll call for a vote, I think. So I nominate our current uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Harris, for chairman. Very good. Any further, and, and nominations do not need a second, so any further nominations? Okay, so I'll close the nominations and then ask for a vote uh, for chair for uh, David Harris. All those in favor say aye. All opposed, uh, same sign. Okay, that appears to pass 13 to zero, and I'll turn it back over. Congratulations, <laughs> Chair Harris. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And now for the election of a vice chair. The vice chair will have to be a county appointee. Could you and remind us who those are? Uh, I, I county appointees are Frederick Davis, Charles Gibbs, uh, Elaine Hyman, Ricky Pageant, and uh, Mr. Hollingworth on the end down there. And commissioners in front of each of those. So. And Commissioner Huff. And Commissioner Huff, I'm sorry. Okay. And Commissioner Huff. So the floor is now open for nominations for Vice Chair. Mr. Chairman, I nominate yes. Commissioner Huff for Vice Chair. Commissioner Huff has been name has been placed in nomination. Commissioner uh, Whitley. I nominate Frederick Davis for Vice Chair. Commissioner Davis has been placed into nominations. Are there other nominations for the position of vice chair? I nominate Elaine Hyman for vice chair. 
Elaine Hammonds, Commissioner Hammonds has been nominated for vice chair. Are there other nominations for vice chair? Are there other nominations for vice chair? Hearing no additional nominations. I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Padgett. Okay, Commissioner Padgett name has been put in the nomination for vice chair. Can I openly decline. <laughs> Uh, let's close the nomination before we have people who, who wants to decline. So are there other nominations for vice chair? If not, could I get a motion to close the nominations on the four said names? Move to close. Can I get a second? second. It's been motion and second that we close the nomination on the four said names. Now, if we have anyone that like to bow out, can we bow out before we vote? Okay, Commissioner Huff wants to bow out and Commissioner Hammonds wants to bow out. So we have left uh, Commissioner Pageant Davis. out. So we have one left. No, Davis. You have Davis. I said one left. That's Davis. <laughs> oh, did, did Commissioner Pageant bow? Yeah. No. Mr. Chairman. Well, that makes it easy. I would like to move that we um, ex, um, vote for the vice, uh, Frederick Davis, the vice chair, by acclamation. You hear a second to the. Okay. Are there questions about the transaction or by acclamation? We're going to accept Commissioner Davis as vice chair. If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Congratulations, Commissioner Davis. Okay. Uh, okay, so I have one announcement. As Mr. White stated, he referenced the uh, procedure that we follow. And it's a procedure that we are governed by the Durham City County Unified Development Ordinance. We're governed by the interlocal between the city and the county. And we're also governed by the general statute of uh, 160 from 360, 160A-360 to 387, and also general statute 153A. Now, this was last revised on November the 10th, and we have found some uh, irregularities or corrections that need to be made. So one of the things I'd like to do is to uh, sign an ad hoc committee to look at that and make those, and they're, they're mostly uh, uh, minor corrections, it's nothing major, but go on and amend this to correct those, uh, those things. Also, and that was done on November the 10th. On November the 15th, 2011, <clears throat> the staff gave us basic rules, uh, Robert's rules basic, and at the conclusion of that, they recommended that the staff recommend the commissions hold a retreat to go over these documents to make sure everybody understand why we do what we do, and, and I would like to go on and, and do that. Uh, uh, this was, again, this was 2011, and nothing had been done since then. So <clears throat> after we get the recommendation uh, from the ad hoc committee about the, uh, our rules of procedure, I would like to go on and schedule a retreat to go over the rules of procedure that we use and why we use what we use, and also the Robert Rules basic and uh, so if, uh, and I will get with staff, and I also have to get with the vice uh, chair, and we'll come up with a plan of action of how to, to get this accomplished. And uh, I have a, a good friend, her name is uh, uh, Tannis Nelson. She is the chair of the North Carolina uh, Association of Parliamentarians. She's from Wilson, and I get her to come up to do the, do the training for us. So if there are no objections, uh, I would like to appoint a committee to be headed by uh, attorney 
Miller to look at our rules of procedure. And I hope everybody have a copy of this. If not, if I can get uh, the clerk to send out a copy. And I would like to work with Mr. Miller on this and also like the uh, vice chair, if you would work with us on that. And we will come up with uh, the corrections and maybe present it to you at our next meeting. And then you have 30 days in which to, uh, to massage it and we're taking action on it. And we'll also include the staff with this. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the staff, you have any additional announcements of what's coming up next month? Mr. Chair, next month we have uh, three land use cases, including the return of the Irwin at LaSalle case from last month. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one text amendment, and we have a informational update on the Station Area Strategic Infrastructure Plan. And also, if I may, I just one other thing I wanted to mention so that you all can think about it until next month. With the departures of Commissioners Smudsky and Board, we lost our Planning Commission representatives to the uh, Durham Open Space and Trails Committee and the oh, yeah. Durham Chapel Hill Orange Work Group. <laughs> so we will need uh, two new commissioners to take those places. Uh, and they, can be, they are appointed by the chair. Yeah. Uh, they are, I, I did see that, and I'm trying to find it here. Uh, okay, the Bike Pedestrian Commission. So we lost, uh, Smusky was there, right? Stas. Yeah. He, was, he was Durham Open Space and Trails. Well, I'd like to know who the bank was. And if I may, I inform the chair, I serve on the Durham Open Space and Trails Commission. I'll be happy to play that role moving forward. Okay. And the, de the Development Review Board? The Development Review Board has been dissolved, so I guess you can point someone to that. I'll but. do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we have the Durham Chapel Hill Working Group. I don't even know what that is. So there's a, uh, a quarterly meeting between the staff and some elected and appointed officials between uh, city and counties of Durham, city of Ch town of Chapel Hill, and Orange County that get together and talk about issues that may affect all the jurisdictions. And so uh, one can, of the representatives is a member of the Durham City County Planning Commission. Who currently represents us? It was, um, it was Ms. Board. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Winders, would you be interested in working on that? A quarterly meeting? Quarterly meeting. It also includes free lunch. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so Commissioner Winders has volunteered. Okay, the Joint City County Planning Commission, I currently serve on that. I will continue that. Open Space and Trails Commission. You just did that one. Uh, okay, yeah, that's Mr. Commissioner Busby. Okay, uh, and do we have any others? Who's the, who is our bike pit? Right? Okay, she did. Yeah, bike pedestrian commission so thank you now you you look fit <laughs> okay is there anything else uh, Mike Mike I, I serve on uh, advice a public advisory committee for parts and rec programs for for uh, special programs uh, and that's uh, just in case you <laughs> want, needed another uh, place to appoint somebody uh, okay. but that's that's where some of my other efforts are okay and I also on yesterday afternoon was appointed the uh, associate uh, supervisor for soil and water Okay, if nothing else to claim my attention, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make the motion, we adjourn. Come motion by Paget does not require a second. All in favor, let it be known by rising and leaving. <laughs>